Our next speaker is uh, Steve Heffman from Mux, who is going to talk about standard for video QoE metrics. Cool. Hi. Uh, my name is Steve Heffernan. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about a standard in progress for quality of experience metrics. We've heard a little bit about that today in various contexts, so rebuffering, startup time, things like that. Um, I work at Mux with Phil, who you've heard from twice today. Uh, we've been wearing the same shirt. That's embarrassing. Um, <coughs> so sorry if you're sick of hearing from us today. We, um, we have a product that is quality, quality of experience monitoring for video players, which is why this is relevant to us. Uh, that's the last I'll talk about our product. Um, before Mux, I created a player called VideoJS, which is another reason why I'm particularly interested in this standard. Um, but Mux is part of a bigger group under the CTA standards body, um, and we are working together to uh, create a standard around these metrics. Um, can I ask really quick, um, raise your hand if you've uh, already heard uh, about this effort. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's actually less than uh, I was expecting, so um, that's great, because um, I get to inform you about all this. Um, We've been working on, on it for a while now, um, but we're getting close uh, to getting a V1 out the door, so um, we're excited about that. The goal of this group is to come up with a standard set of so player properties, player metrics, um, or player events, uh, aggregate metrics, and just general terminology around these things, uh, because uh, sometimes it's hard to even know that we're talking about the same thing today. Um, for example, uh, we were helping stream an event earlier this year where the customer is using uh, two different analytics platforms, uh, one on half their, their uh, platform and one on the other half, and even something as simple that you would think as um, current concurrent viewers. You'd think that'd be easy to define and easy to um, measure the same across platforms, but even there we had trouble comparing uh, for simple reasons like, for example, uh, if a user is paused, uh, are they currently concurrently viewing that video or not? Uh, these two analytic systems felt differently about that topic. So, uh, and then you get to do a detail like uh, uh, buffer underrun. We call it uh, rebuffering. We call it stalling. Uh, HTML calls it waiting. Uh, end users don't know what to call it. They call it. They say it's pausing a lot, right? Um, so, if all we can do in this process is come up with a standard set of terminology around these things, that would be uh, a positive impact. What do I specifically mean about uh, QOE? Um, we are intentionally focusing on what the, view, the viewer specifically saw, um, because that's ultimately what we care about. What did the viewer experience? Uh, we have kind of uh, def defined separately the idea of QOS in this process, so QE versus QOS, um, in that QoS is a measurement of a system, a, a specific service, um, and measuring how well that service is performing uh, compared to what the viewer actually experienced. Um, and to give you an example of where that might uh, come into play, uh, for example, if you preload a video. Um, when you're preloading a video, uh, the user hasn't requested it yet, right? You're waiting, you request the video, and then you're waiting for them to actually click play on the video player you might have actually a bad uh, time downloading that video. It might take you a long time to download that video. Um, and that would be a negative QoS metric, a quality of, ex of service metric. But if the user hasn't clicked the play button yet, when they do click that play button, if you have that video, uh, it may still start quickly. And, and for them, it's a good experience. So that's a positive QoE experience, quality of experience. Um, and so that's important, right, because uh, your QoS system might be telling you, hey, you should probably pay attention to these bad uh, load times over here, but there might actually be something more important that's related to the actual viewer experience um, on this side, on the, Q the quality of experience side. So that um, is both like a mechanism for us to uh, define what we're talking about and also narrow down the set of metrics that we're going after because th these conversations can blow up into a lot of different requirements. To uh, talk about uh, more of the kind of sp specifics of what we're talking about there, uh, this diagram is from the document um, that shows the ecosystem that we're talking about. So you have a device, and on that device, there's an analytics client that is plugging into a media player, listening for events, reading player properties, gathering that information, sending it back to an analytics server uh, to then aggregate the metrics into um, yeah, aggregate metrics. 
An example of that might be uh, so playback failure percentage. And this is at the aggregate level. We're talking about so across all of the times that a viewer tried to play a video, uh, what percentage of those times did the, did the video fail to play due to an error? Um, so that's at the aggregate level. In order to create that aggregate metric, we need something at the session level that we're tracking. So for every video view, um, what did the video view play or fail? Right? So in this case, it's a Boolean. For something like startup time, you might have a number of seconds. Um, but then you're taking these session, met these session level metrics and then aggregating them at a, at a higher level. And then we get to the player details. So players are uh, going to be required to have um, and already have events and properties that um, signal to the analytic system that these things are happening so um, that the analytic systems can know and then report these things back. So in this case, letting the analytic system know, hey, this, this video view failed, uh, you should probably record that. And then here's some specific properties that let you know context around that. What was the error details? Uh, what was the content ID? So that then at an aggregate, aggregate level, these things can uh, be pulled together. So when you're defining all these things, uh, you end up creating complicated diagrams like this one up here where you start thinking through what are the different states that a player is going through as um, the viewer is watching the video and how do these states relate to how you're measuring startup time and rebuffering. And um, in this case, we have uh, a mid-roll ad in the middle of the playback and trying to understand how, wh what kind of impact does that have. Um, and it brings up inter interesting questions like, um, say you have client-side ad and it has to stop to load. You get the, you get the loader wheel um, before the ad loads, um, right after the content. Do you consider that startup time for an ad or is that rebuffering, stalling for the user? Right? The viewer didn't request that ad. It just kind of stopped and started to load for them. So these are the types of conversations that we're continuing to have uh, in the group. But to start with, we have kind of a core set of uh, relatively simple metrics um, that we're trying to get out just as a V1 to build on top of. Uh, we tried to get a metric in at least, uh, one, at least one metric in each of these kind of four major categories. So playback success and failure, stalling, rebuffering, startup time, video audio quality. Um, yeah, simple set. You might be looking at this and saying, uh, you know, that's not nearly enough metrics. I use way more than this. Or, you know, this is missing my favorite metric. Where's that at? Um, or average initial start startup time. That's a crappy metric. Um, okay, so A, um, like I said, this is meant to be a baseline. Um, goal here was uh, a simple set of metrics, simple to understand and also simple to implement so that any, any analytic system could uh, quickly dive in, start creating these things, and um, essentially start providing feedback on this process. Uh, and then B, uh, this is the exact type of feedback that you should be giving us uh, as we go through this process. So we have the spec on GitHub today under the CTA standards repo. Uh, technically, comments are closed on this today as we work towards getting out of V1. Uh, we do hope to get that out um, in the next couple of months. Uh, it's been a long process, but it feels like we're getting close. Um, but uh, in the meantime, happy to field any questions and comments on this front. Um, yeah, my contact info is up there on the slide, steve at mux.com. We'd love to get your uh, feedback back on these things. If you're a player developer, um, analytics vendor, um, anybody building these things internally or just using these metrics, uh, love feedback on these things. Um, and, uh, or if you just want to know when, when this is out and want to be notified, feel free to hit me up and I will let you know. And that is it. Thank you. Any question on video, video quality of experience? Mm -hmm. Ali, that's your pet subject, no? I just want to make a comment, actually. Uh, our uh, video player team, which is uh, based in Denver, uh, they are following this spec very closely, and they would like to converge as soon as possible. But they are really waiting for you to finish the spec and you know, make it stable at some point. So, yes. And that's coming in a couple of months, you said? Hopefully before IBC? <laughs> that's, that's the hope at this point, yeah. It has been a long process. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know how standards goes for most people, but you know, it's a challenge to get everybody in the same room every, uh, well, on the same call every couple of weeks. And so uh, it's been slow, but uh, we're getting there. Yeah. All right. Well, we are fully supportive of this initiative. Thank you.
Cool, thank you. Any other question? Yes. Uh, hi, Steve. Um, I think one thing for ABI algorithm is the, like a switching frequency or switching from a highest rendition to the lowest rendition or back and forth. That's really annoying. Uh, does this the, the stand is taking that into consideration? Uh, and the follow-up question is that uh, there are multiple factors like a buffering rate or the quality and this frequ uh, switching frequency. Do you consider combine them into one number and what's the weight for each factors? Hmm. Mm. Uh, okay, so first question was around switching metrics and details around that, right? Well, then combining. You had two, right? Okay. So yeah, first, uh, yeah, switching metrics uh, has come up in conversations. Uh, we definitely want to get there. Like the V1 that we put out is definitely not the end of the conversation, and we'll be building on top of that. Um, uh, I can say we have not yet talked about combining any of these things into one number. Um, uh, Mux has done this. I know other analytics platforms has has done this and try to create like one overall number that you can just look from day to day. Like, am I doing better today compared to yesterday? Um, we've talked about how we do that, that publicly and are happy to share that with anybody. Um, and that's an interesting process to figure out the right way to weight those things. Uh, so happy to talk to you about that more. We have not even touched on that quite yet in the standards group. So. Okay. So we'll stop the question here because we want to move to our next speaker. Thank you very much, Steve.